Well, good morning, friends. Welcome to Well Versed. Lovely to greet you in the name of Jesus, and I pray that you are blessed as you hear me now. And I want us to move on today into Galatians in chapter 4 today, and I'm reading from verse 21 to 31. This is the story of two women, Hagar and Sarah. One is a slave, and the other one is free. But let me read it to you, and we can then put a bit of flesh on it in a moment. So from verse 21, tell me you who want to be under the law, are you not aware of what the law says? For it's written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and the other by the free woman. His son by the slave woman was born according to the flesh, but his son by the free woman was born as a result of a divine promise. These things are being taken figuratively. The women represent two covenants. One covenant is from Mount Sinai and bears children who are to be slaves. And this is Hagar. And now Hagar stands for Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to the present city of Jerusalem because she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem that is above is free and she is our mother. For it is written, Be glad, and he's quoting Old Testament here. Be glad, barren woman, you who never bore a child. Shout for joy and cry aloud, you who were never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband. Now you, brothers and sisters like Isaac, are children of promise. At that time the son born according to the flesh persecuted the son born by the power of the Spirit. It's the same now. But what does Scripture say? Get rid of the slave woman and her son, for the slave woman's son will never share in the inheritance with the free woman's son. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we are not children of the slave woman, but of the free woman. Just to there. As I said a moment ago, it's the story of two women, figuratively representing Israel and what follows. One is a slave, the other one is free. The slave was Hagar. Hagar has Ishmael. Abraham's wife is Sarah, who has Isaac. The free woman is Sarah, born barren until the age of 90. And yet God promises her a son by the Spirit. And his name was Isaac. I hope I've clarified that for you. So Hagar represents the law or the old covenant. And Sarah represents grace, which is the new covenant. Now, verse 26 says the Jerusalem that is above is free and she is our mother. Jerusalem In this context, in the Old Testament context, Jerusalem is the kingdom of God, the city where Christ lives. Sarah is the mother of all believers. The barren woman. Hmm. And then from verse 27, it says, For it's written, Be glad, barren woman, you who never bore a child. Shout for joy and cry aloud. You who were never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband. Verse 27. Be glad, barren woman, you who never bore a child. And then goes on to verse 28. God's promise is a living word that gives life. That promise is Jesus Christ in our context. We who believe, verse 31, we who believe in Christ are the children of the free woman of the promise, the woman of the promise. All this by the power of the Holy Spirit. What's the bottom line in this little passage? Because it's very intricate and I really want to encourage you to read this again slowly in your own time. The bottom line is let's not throw away the great gift of God. Let's not throw away the great gift of grace. 
And the only way we cannot throw it away is to put our faith in Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ alone. In essence, this bit that we're doing this morning is Paul in a very roundabout way, just trying to say to you and to me centuries later, you've got a choice. Is it going to be law or is it going to be grace? Because in a sense, that's what all this is about. It's about law and grace. And I know that I'm talking to children of grace. I hope it's been helpful, folks. I know it's a little intricate today, but I just wanted to make the distinction between Hagar and Sarah representing law on the one hand, Hagar, and Sarah representing grace on the other hand. And when we understand that, then we understand that we are children of grace. And how important is that to know? We are children of grace. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Uh, Sometimes you challenge us uh, to really put on our thinking caps and and wrestle a little uh, with the words that come to us from Scripture. But Father, please just write it in our hearts, the simplicity actually of this message that it's it's about grace it's not about law it's about you you are about love and forgiveness and wholeness and renewal and blessing and freedom and we don't want to be bound by keeping rules and regulations for the sake of keeping rules and regulations set us free O god in this moment just to embrace you by way of your son jesus And ask you, Lord, if you would fill us with your spirit. Pour your spirit out to us now, Lord, such that instinctively we understand what we've heard this morning. And if that be the case, then we are blessed. And so be with us now as we go into our day, O God, and we give it all to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.